What's up StarCraft fans, this video is brought to you by Karis Ban who is supporting the Pulse Cannon tier. This month he requested that I do Commander Pro Tips, specifically with Artanis. These are meant to be helpful, especially for beginners, and if you have more information about Artanis, please write them down below so that those who want to know more about this commander from watching this video can just look at the comments down below and learn more about that uh, commander. So uh, yeah, these are 10 Pro Tips for Artanis. Number 1. When in doubt, mass Dragoons. Dragoons are ranged units. They can shoot up and they can shoot down. They are built from these gateways and you can actually uh, warp them in directly onto the field as long as you have a power field to warp them in. So whenever you go for Dragoons, you want to get two upgrades from the Twilight Council. Specifically, Singularity Charge would increase, which increases their range and also the Trilla Compression System. Uh, the one on the, the right most, which will increase their health. So that will allow your Dragoons to be more effective on the field. The nice thing about Dragoons is that they're very simple conceptually. Of course, there's a lot of room to set yourself apart by playing well. You can kite your Dragoons, you can stutter step them, you can have them target fire at enemies, you can have them uh, micro back when they're getting hurt. When you lose Dragoons, it's not the end of the world, you just replace them, and they're relatively inexpensive, and they are pretty effective once you get a big army of them. Like, you can actually max out on Dragoons, almost entirely Dragoons, uh, and if you build no other units, you will be fine as long as uh, you're not being hard countered, which is probably not going to be a frequent occurrence with Dragoons. Number 2. Be efficient with Solo Bombardment Solo Bombardment is a powerful top bar ability which rains down these orbital strikes from your top bar. So it's the final top bar of Artanis. It comes online every 5 minutes and it doesn't cost energy, just cooldown. So the way you be efficient with Solo Bombardment is to number 1, of course use it every time it comes off cooldown because it doesn't cost energy it literally just becomes available every few minutes. So the logic is, if you don't use your top bar, you will not essentially have it. Basically, if you don't use it, you lose it. Because, for example, take this map, Missed Opportunities. This map runs approximately 29 minutes, so you divide that by 5, you have about 5 uses of Soul Bombardment. So you can either have, if you're being efficient at least, 5 uses of Soul Bombardment, or, if you just save it for a rainy day, for example, you can end up having like no uses at all, which means you effectively rule yourself at a top bar. There are three specific scenarios that you want to use top bar on, or the solo bombardment on. Specifically, the first one is by using it on a big wave of small units, because the solo bombardment is a big area of effect spell, and you want to use it on yeah a, a large area to take out um, enemies. And uh, the second way is to use it in offense. You can actually drop Soul Bombardment instead of uh, defensively, as the is showing right here. You can actually you can actually drop it instead in the enemy base because again, it's a large area damage spell. It will damage everything that the enemy owns inside a large area. So you can actually yeah just punch through enemy base using Soul Bombardment. The third way is by Dropping Soul Bombardment on top of a main objective. There are some main objectives that can be sniped using a Soul Bombardment. For example, the first two Void Slivers on Sky to Famon. You can actually just destroy those two outright by centering your Soul Bombardment on top of those main objectives. Number 3. When facing Zergling based compositions, add Zelots to tank for your Dragoons. As I mentioned previously, it's not very often that you get hard countered as mass Dragoons. But one of those instances where you will want something else is when you're facing against Zergling based compositions. Because Zerglings are small units which will deal a lot of damage pretty fast so you want Zelots in front of your Dragoons because they have splash damage and they actually hard counter Z uh, Zerglings pretty hard. So instead of your Dragoons tanking damage, it'll be your Zelots in front absorbing all that damage and allowing your Dragoons free reign. To stand in front of them, yeah, look at that, mowing down the Zerglings and making sure only the weak ones survive. Number 4. Without prestige, Chrono Boost efficiency is superior 
to get units and upgrades out faster. So in our Tantus default setup, the Orbital Strike doesn't spawn Archon dudes, and the Deploy Power Field doesn't cost energy. So when you're using Hierarch of the Dalem or maybe sometimes Valor of Inspirator, you actually want to take away from Spear of Green Energy and use it instead in Kernel Boost Efficiency so that you can pump out your economy faster, get workers and units and upgrades faster so that your army will be better. The reason being is because the energy uh, using top bars that you have, for example, Orbital Strike and uh, Shield Overcharge aren't quite as impactful as they would be if you have, for example, Archer Commandant and your deployed power field isn't quite as expensive as if you, as in if you use Nexus Legate. Number 5. Conversely, when you are using Nexus Legate or Archer Commandant Prestigious, the Spear of Rune Energy Mastery is superior because your top bar doesn't suck. This is just the opposite of what I told you earlier. When you're using Nexus Legate, you want to project your power field a lot so that you can basically stim your army because it will give them the uh, speed increases, which by the way, if you're using Nexus Legate, you definitely want speed increases for warped in units because how you want to use your Nexus Legate is you put your army in the power field, project the power field elsewhere, and then your newly warped in army will gain, will regain rather, the speed increases to make them shoot faster and move faster, which is great. And also if you're using Archip Arch Commandant, you definitely want to use Orbital Strikes because those will spawn the Archon dudes which are pretty powerful, tanky, and will absolutely help you win fights. So yeah, Spear of Energy if you're using Nexus Legate and Archip Commandant. Number 6. In most scenarios, you can get away with a singular pylon for the whole game. You can put a maximum of 16 buildings around this pylon, and the only thing you will need to build, or rather have, to warp your units in is a power field, and you actually don't need to make, to make any more pylons until maybe the very late game. Obviously, the main reason this works for Tannis is because he starts with 200 supply once he hit level 15, so the pylons is strictly there as a power field so that you can put your buildings, just so you can deploy your buildings and your forces. So now that you have your power field on the map, that's where you deploy your units. So what that will mean is the only other use for making a pylon is so that you can put your buildings. So the way you want to set this up is you actually want to have four buildings on either side of the pylon like this. So the way you put your buildings is uh, you want to have, yeah, a pylon here and uh, their first gateway a bit above to the left or right of the pylon or a bit below just just in one of these configurations and then you build out from there. Four buildings on the left, four buildings on the right, and then four on top, four at the bottom. That's how you fit 16 buildings in a singular power field. Of course uh, if you're fighting something that needs detection you can also have cannons inside the same wall so you can have stuff shooting from within your buildings. Number 7. High Templar are very effective versus big waves of small units. It's almost like having a top bar almost. This makes itself very apparent against large groups of small units like these infantry right here. Just these two High Templar alone are able to take out the play, but of course my Zealots felt free to join in and they will finish off these medics which kind of, uh, kind of heal each other at a sufficient rate that the two High Templar didn't quite finish off these medics, but the rest of the waves pretty much deleted. We'll see it here again. High Templar just spamming the yeah, just four high two high Templar. Just spamming the storms and just deleting this entire wave. By the way, you will want to get this upgrade, the the this upgrade right here with the, the pale blue storm thing, which will allow your storms to stack. In co-op, the storms can stack. It can actually just Yeah, put storms on top of each other so that you can deal more damage to the enemies. Number 8. When using Archer Commandant, ensure your Orbital Strikes have a place to spawn your Archon Dudes. As I mentioned before, when you're using the Archer Commandant Prestige, each Orbital Strike you use will deploy an Archon Dude, for example this guy. So this Archon Dude is an extremely powerful unit with a lot of health, it can tank a lot of enemies. But the thing is that you have to make sure that the Archon Dude spawns, so currently the uh, Orbital Strike Specifically, the Archon Dude is bugged for Archer Combat Artanis, which means that if you put the Orbital Strike in the middle of these rocks, for example, the Archon Dude will find no place to spawn, so it will just not spawn. So what you have to do is make sure that 
you shoot it to the side of this piece of rock right here so that the Archon dudes will have somewhere to spawn and take out the rocks. So it doesn't matter as much if you shoot it on top of units because the Archons can just push the units out. It can push units out but not buildings, so make sure that you don't shoot on top of buildings, but on top of army is mostly okay. Number 9, use buildings for late game. This is actually a twofold pro tip, so later in the game, you'll find yourself uh, having a high supply, sometimes you're maxed out, and uh, you'll, find you you'll find yourself floating a lot of money. So what you want to do is make a lot of productive structures, so that anytime you lose units, you can just resupply or uh, refill immediately with whatever it is you want to build. The second one is that when you're defending multiple points over a larger time frame, for example on opportunities or on Mal Warfare, you want to have these buildings to block the approach of the enemies, specifically Cybernetics course. They are pretty tanky, they have 1100 health, and they will allow your army to get in place uh, while the enemies are still trying to attack them. So yeah, the game plan for the last part is just stall. Just stall the enemies using these buildings until your army gets there to delete said waves. Number 10, use zealots or buildings to keep the enemy in place while using orbital strike. Orbital strike as a top bar has a tendency to miss, so it's important to keep the enemy in place so that the orbital strikes actually connect when you shoot them. So to do that, you can have zealots to kind of stand back to back so that they kind of draw the zerglings in here and basically uh, keep them in place. Of course, the Archon dudes themselves will do that once you have them spawn, but yeah, against, well, if you're not using Prestige, this is particularly more useful. So when you're not using Prestige, the Orbital Strikes will just shoot and they won't spawn Archon dudes, so having these Zalots to keep them in place is pretty important so that they don't move around while shooting and will allow you to take them out with relative ease. So there you have it guys, 10 pro tips from me, Stixbender, Tutu, and company. Um, for playing with Hurtanus. If you have more information to share down below, please do so. And uh, conversely, if you're looking for more information on how to play Hurtanus, there will probably be comments down below informing you guys for what works for them in playing Hurtanus. Also, there are more videos on this playlist showing how to play Hurtanus as level 1, level 90, and what have you. So I will see you guys next time.